uh, on the stage and the panel members, respected panel members. We have really excellent panel members. And this is the first session of uh, World Food India 2024. Welcome to World Food India 2024 all of, to all of you. <laughs> Usually sessions like this, we have some 40 and odd sessions. And uh, our ministry alone is having some 24 of them. And uh, we don't find much crowd. And I'm very, we are very fortunate. We have a really interesting crowd in front of us. And uh, interesting panel as well. And this is one of the most important uh, topics. Uh, the, just uh, we have selected. We pondered over nearly three months what are the session topics to be with Invest India. And uh, several meetings, finally, we ended up with uh, some names, you know, such suggestions, some titles. And the first session, fortunately, they put the first session as uh, for the, uh, this uh, revolutionizing the food processing machinery for an Atma Nirbar Bharat. Uh, we have a, I'm a director, Nipton Tanjavur, Professor Paranamuthu, and uh, with us, uh, we have, uh, of course, the names are there, Nitin Gupta uh, from, let me check, because I, I should not uh, miss, uh, Nitin Gupta is from, Sikil, no? Sikil Inventions, and then we have Adit uh, Dharan, uh, he's from uh, uh, Bueller. Jeweler India, and uh, we have Casio Simos from uh, uh, he's an MD South Asia Markets Tetra Pak, and I said these are all big companies really. And then we have Amit Shahji, and uh, he's from uh, U Flex, and all of you know they have a big stalls Tetra Pak, U Flex, all they have in hall number 14, a uh, big pavilions, and then we have uh, 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 Mr. Sanjeev Goyal, uh, Mahan Milk Products, he's a man from dairy industry. Uh, we, we have a really very interesting panel here, and why really we chose this topic? In India, you, all of you know, we produce a lot of uh, food, pro food. We are really, in the morning session, our secretary was mentioning, we produce about 1,000 million tons of food, 335 million tons of grains, uh, pulses, rice, flour, wheat, everything put together. We have, uh, we produce about 330, 345 million tons of agricultural produce and uh, we have uh, 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 fish, uh, fish production some, somewhere around, uh, I think 16 million tons, meat about 10 million tons, 120, I think uh, 122 million, I think 220, 220 million tons of milk and 120 billion of eggs and so on. It's about 1000 million tons of food. All of us need food. If, 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 you know, food is produced elsewhere. If you want it on your plate, you need to be, you know, many times you have, it has to be processed. Even a rice, it comes as a patty, you have to process into rice. That means processing anything you talk, now talk about processing, you need machinery. Machinery, no, we have a really, uh, India is, uh, is it self sufficient with the, in, in terms of uh, agriculture, you know, processing machinery for food? No. We have nearly, uh, for big companies, nearly 40 to 50 percent of the machinery, the machinery uh, for uh, uh, big industries are imported still. We import from America, Europe, Italy, Germany, and uh, there are many countries, Japan, Korea, China. China is coming in big way in some of the uh, sectors. We, you know, we import machinery for, uh, uh, for bakery, dairy, meat processing mainly and then confectionery, machinery, you name it. Every big industries, they, uh, they have a lot of imports. No, you know, there is a paradox, no, paradox. We also export similar type of machinery elsewhere. We export to Middle East countries, we export to uh, no, African countries. You know, there are many places, you know, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brazil, Argentina, we export also machinery. Our uh, import is, uh, I think uh, in a year back, about 25,000 crores of machinery we import. That is a big amount. Atma Nirbhar Bharat is actually self-sufficient India. Is it, is it possible for this country to make all the machinery what we require within this country itself? Of course, we have a very, very, very good industry. We start from, say, I already we have a Tetra Pak, Alpha Level, GIA. There are many, many companies which make very good machinery. 
But there are, there are two things when when we talk about Atma Nirma Bharat. Now we are having different types of consumers for this machinery. We need a machinery which are really efficient. And the some other machinery, we don't have a technology, we have to really import it. We need a very quality machinery which gives you a really nutritious food to you without much waste. And the energy efficient machinery. These things are also very uh, prime importance when you, you know, when you select the machinery. Now, the rural, you know, rural agro processing, because there are many commodities, you need not process in Delhi or Bangalore or near Mumbai or Thane. It is not necessary. See, I, I produce a, a wheat. I, you know, most of the, you know, nearly 60% of the population lives in uh, uh, villages. I should be able to make flour which is required for the roti within my surrounding places. We need good machinery there as well. We need a quality machinery for smaller processes also. And of course, the bakery industry has you know, launched a tremendously last 15, 20 years. Bakery has come up in a big way. In every small towns and villages, you will find bakery products. It is not the case about 30 years back. That means we need a product and a quality machinery. Meat processing, really, we are not that good in, good in this country. In most of the machineries are imported from US and Japan or some other place. And with this introduction, we have uh, five different talks. I think the way uh, uh, what uh, we plan uh, during initial preliminary discussion, uh, we uh, give a time about uh, six, seven, seven minutes around uh, uh, time for each speaker. They have a uh, different topics. Unfortunately, it is not mentioned here. Uh, let me check my old uh, uh, when we decided these topics. I think we, uh, we have decided for different people. I think uh, uh, we will first call upon, uh, who we will call? I will call Simo. Ask, catch your Simo, this is the first name in this list. Huh? Oh, you are here. <laughs> Only one time I have seen you, that's why I missed you. Uh, okay, uh, he's from, uh, no, he will, uh, he's from Tetra Pak. We know Tetra Pak is a very big company. They have business across the uh, globe. And uh, they are very, very big player here as well. Uh, here as well. And uh, they are big sponsors today. <laughs> That's why they are in the hall number 14, very near to Mafi Pavilion. And uh, we should really uh, give him a big hand. Uh, we, will, uh, we will speak on role, role of, uh, I think this is correct, in our ASFT packaging. This one. Yeah, that one. There are two topics. Maybe in, uh, if time is more, then we can give another topic also. Innovation in packaging and processing uh, technologies in food processing, uh, 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 in food processing in India. This is a topic uh, for uh, uh, Casio Simos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you. If you want to visit our booth, is on uh, 14. We have a lot of uh, new products there to be tried. I just bought someone uh, plant-based high protein that you can try in our in our world. Uh, every time that I get together in this uh, sort of session, you know, I I try to see if, what sort of value I can bring to the audience. Yeah? And I want to start this conversation with a number. It's uh, 10 billion. 10 billion is supposed to be the size of the population in 2050. Okay. 10 billion people. We are 8 billion today, we go to 10 billion in 2050. If you take into account the whole food producing in the world today, 30%, pre zero, 30% is wasted. If you put in this equation that countries underdeveloped, they will consume more products, more processed products, because income per capita will increase. So you have this equation of uh, more need of food until 2050. If we don't do anything today, we will need 60% more land to feed the entire population. Do you think that this is, is sustainable for the future? It's not sustainable. That's why advanced food processing technology you know, plays a, a, a very important role on it. 
I was in 2023 during the World Food Day. I was so happy to hear uh, Prime Minister Mott saying that uh, we need to increase processing of perishable food. And why perishable food? Because if you take this 30% around the world wasted, in India, this number is even higher. And perishable food is the food that has the shorter shelf life. So that's why the, important, the importance of food, uh, food processing, because it will help us on preventing loss and minimize waste. So it will also contribute for a more sustainable world. We need to bear in mind that food waste today is one of the biggest gas methane generator in the atmosphere. Okay? So one, one important thing, we all know that uh, India today is the fastest growing market around the world. No doubt about it. Present has been bright and future is promising to be even bright. If you see the food processing, food manufacturing role in this journey growth is amazing. Food sector is growing 7.3% year on, on year in the last 10 years. And the projections are to continue like that. If you take gross value added, there is one indicator for GDP. In the last 10 years also, it increased 58%. 1.92 lakh crore is the size. So there is a huge opportunity on food processing for the internal market in India. But it's also there is a huge opportunity for India to be part of the global food supply chain. And that is the reason, there is the reason of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, the self-reliant India. Did I pronounce correct? Thank you. So self-reliance India, vocal for local, local for global, made for work. That is the opportunity. And during the session, I will share with you, because most of you know that I buy this carbon package. But we are more than that. We are an end-to-end solution provider. And next part, I will tell you. Everybody thinking that it is a, they are a manufacturers of packaging material, but they are more than packaging material. That's what uh, uh, our uh, Casio was telling. Now I really call them for the next round. Next speaker, uh, Mr. Ajit Dharan. He is from a very big company, Bueller India. Uh, he is uh, head of uh, consumer uh, foods, South Asia. And uh, he will be talking about impact and awareness status of various schemes among Indian people on food system. Or you could you speak something else? I speak something else. <laughs> yeah, better you speak about Bueller. Because we know about Bueller, but let the audience also know about it. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dr. Palimutu. Thanks, Kashu. Uh, we are all working in a similar industry, so whatever, uh, a lot of stuff is Kashu spoke but also have relevance to uh, the business we are operating. Uh, and then from my outset, I thank all of you for joining this session and uh, for the WFI organizing committee for inviting me here. Uh, before I start on my topic, just to give a brief about Bueller. Uh, Bueller is a 160-year-old Swiss-based multinational uh, providing processing solutions for grains, foods, feed, and advanced materials. We operate in 140 countries with uh, market leadership in most of the businesses we operate, flour milling, chocolate, pasta, biscuits. So you don't see us, but we have a company behind the brand. Uh, we are on a B2B segment, but I would say if uh, some of you have a piece of dairy milk, uh, you have a Kit Kat, uh, any piece of chocolate, I would say 80% of chocolate what you consume is made on Bueller Michels. Uh, if most of you eat consumed rice, I'm sure you know the likes of India Gate, uh, all the brands, 30% uh, of price gets processed on Bula Mission. So we touch you uh, uh, day in and day out. 
And uh, our promise, what we say is 2 billion people consume food made on Bueller solutions. And uh, 1 billion people uh, use mobility solutions uh, provided Bueller. Uh, but that's not the story I want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about what Bueller India has done um, in two angles. One is with the Make in India initiatives, which is the topic what we want to do. But uh, more important also is the local innovations, how we have done. So I would, I would run through that session today. And um, Dr. Pali Muthu spoke about 330 million tons of grains produced in India. So we don't have a problem of food production. We are self reliant in, in most of the food grains, except for an odd year where we have to import maybe 5, 6 tons of pulses. But otherwise, wheat, rice, wheat, flour, uh, wheat, uh, wheat millets, we are self reliant in, in a lot of way. And uh, Bueller India started in 1992, where initially it was all based on technology transfer from our principles. And uh, we were catering to the Indian market. But then where it, it helped customers at some level, but clearly the demand from the market was we need solutions, equipment designed in India, designed for India. Uh, that's a clear pull which came from the customers and that set the ball rolling for us. Uh, if you want to capture more market, then we need to be in the, in the market we need to design something what the market needs. And I will draw upon a few examples which has worked for us successfully and I'm sure it's got relevance for you. So let me talk about rice. India is the second largest producer of rice, 135 million tons of rice is produced and more than 75 to 80 percent of the rice mills are of a smaller capacity. When I say small capacity is around 6 tons per hour uh, and below is what we call a maybe a 4 tons per hour in small capacity. And we did not have the solutions in the Bueller basket. Uh, but really if we wanted to do something in India then we had to develop the solutions in India. And we developed a solution for the Indian market what we call the smart line. And that enabled us to offer a best in class technology without compromising anything. And uh, that helped us to uh, cater to the uh, mid-level, what we call it, and the lower level of the segment. But then we don't stop there. One is offering machines. Uh, but then we say, okay, we also need to build a competence center. And when I say competence center, we talk about both hardware and software. Hardware part is easier done. We build the machine, we technology transfer, etc. But the software is where we build a competence center. We offer complete solutions. And here the solution, when I say, we talk about paddy. We talk about right from pre-cleaning, storage, drying, milling, sorting, automated solutions. This is what we call the complete value chain. And this is what we want to give it to our customers here. And they hence the development of the competence center in India for us. And we take this at more levels, but I don't want to, um, I will give it to my next speaker and then I'll come back to my topic again. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a brief uh, intro in fact, when I completed my MTech, I wanted to go for to Bueller for my job. Some, somehow they did not take me, so I became a professor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also an idea. Okay, <laughs> very good in rice milling. Now we even just to clarify, maybe you're the one qualified here. <laughs> now, now I really invite the next speaker, Mr. Amit Shah. He is a giant president of the flexible packaging uh, business of Uflex. They are having a very big pavilion adjacent to our Mofi. And they are known for uh, many products. Uh, today also they were uh, actually light demonstrating it in the half for I really uh, invite. Uh, he will he'll be talking about emerging innovation and uh, sustainable uh, developments in food packaging for uh, processed food, uh, food industry. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so before I start my session, you know, normally uh, sessions are made interesting by throwing a lot of uh, data points. Uh, 10 billion, 30 percent, uh, 3 and 30 billion. So you know, these are some of the things people normally use in sessions because it registers in your mind, right? But I'll do it a little differently and uh, the objective of my session would be that, and, I, and that is a promise of performance that I say normally before I speak, is that by the end of the session, your understanding about how packaged food reaches you 
or your understanding about flexible packaging will go up by 5 percent. Not bad. Okay, let's start with that number. So before I start, uh, I would request, uh, I'll do a dipstick check. How many people in this room have some understanding about what is flexible packaging? You can raise your hands. No, apart from people from Uflex, yeah? <laughs> Any polythene cover is all flexible. He's very flexible man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So, so I think I have a, a fairly decent task that ahead of me, right? I, I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but I just could see about three hands, right? So, okay. So next time you guys go down to the supermarket and you walk down the aisle, right? Look at any product, right? Just think as to how that product has reached the share. Just think about it. Okay? So, let me give you some example today. Uh, people are familiar with liquid detergents. Everyone is familiar with liquid detergents, right? Detol. Can you recall any brand? Detol, Lifebuoy. Liquid detergent. Cream, Sussexual. Yeah. 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 So, so liquid detergents, so you see them packed in pouches, right? So what is so unique about that packaging? Why did you get attracted to that product? Hmm? Yeah, so, yeah, stackability, the convenience of use, it has a spouse, right? So that is flexible packaging. Flexible packaging has, and cheaper also. So flexible packaging has, Made brands available to consumers. So that's what flexible packaging does. And believe me, after this sentence, next time, whenever you go to a supermarket, believe me, you will try and see every product from a different perspective. That's why it's a sentence gain. Agree? Disagree. Right? So you will see that you have lays which is getting packed, yeah, reaching the shelf, large packs. Has anyone been to Leh, uh, Srinagar, Shimla? Have you ever seen uh, in what format is a chips packet there? Do you recall anything? They are yes. Most yeah. They are most Sorry? They are most well yeah. yeah, it is absolutely at the bursting point. Yeah. Right? And you know the reason for that, right? Uh, it was a like lower atmospheric pressure. Yeah. Right? So therefore the pack just swells up, but please understand that the chips are still fresh inside. How was it done? That makes it the packaging. Again, another 5% rate point please. What about your 10% knowledge gain? Okay, so let's start the session. And a little bit about Uflex. Uh, started by Mr. Chaturvedi, first generation entrepreneur in uh, 1985. We are a $2 billion company today, spread across 10 countries across the globe. In India, we are based in Noida. And anyone who has any interest about flexible packaging are most welcome to visit us because there is something more that we do. And let me share with you what is that more. So there's some, you know, some basic numbers, let me just start with that. So traditionally, the key role that packaging played was providing protection, offering convenience and enabling brands to be differentiated. That was the traditional role that packaging used to play. Now, packaging has a very interesting growth rate, right? It normally grows at a delta of plus 2% to the industry growth rate, to the GDP growth rate, right? But going forward, this is going to change. Why is it going to change? Is because the share of manufacturing in the overall GDP in the next 30 years is going to increase significantly. And the share of traditional sectors is going to reduce. So therefore, what early was benchmarked as a delta plus 2% will probably become a delta 4 or delta 5%. So that is a kind of opportunity flexible packaging offers. Now, everyone remember the Spider-Man movie, right? With great powers come great responsibilities, right? Now, general question to all of you, right? How many of you have honestly disposed of the pack after you have consumed it in a dustbin? Okay. 
would not believe me, in this subset if I see, the percentage points comes to about 35%. India produces, or let's say the Indian brands consume, almost 200,000 tons of flexible packaging every month. Right? Any numbers, how much, of, how much out of that is getting collected? Give me anyone, give me one number. The numbers are something people remember. 5%. Exactly, 5%. Ma'am, that's why when you go around, you see plastic waste all around. Right? And everyone says today, plastic is bad. Right? But let us all collectively remember that the growth of the Indian economy has been enabled by flexible packaging. How? Anyone can answer this question, how and why? Why did flexible packaging enable growth of the Indian economy? Just think. You experience it every day. Absolutely. It made the product available to the consumer at the price point which was affordable. You had shampoo sachet which was made affordable to you at 1 rupee. You had a packet of tea which was made available to you at 5 rupee price point or 2 rupee price point. In lesser let's say economically well of state, spices are also made available to consumers at one rupee price point. It's a every meal consumption item. So you buy a sachet of uh, spice, in one meal you kind of, you know, you use it up and you throw it away. So therefore with great powers come greater responsibilities. Now flexible packaging has given you this power. It has given you this ability to use the product. But the greatest responsibility falls on you is on us to dispose it in properly. So therefore, you know, I have my friends here from, uh, you know, Buller, there are other packaging machine manufacturers. See, everyone's technology has evolved over the years, right? And one of the key drivers for evolution of machine manufacturing or processing has been that A, the brands want to make it more economically efficient, right? They want to make it, you don't have a wider portfolio of products. Everyone has made machines, right? But ultimately, how will the product get delivered to the consumer? Right? It is the flexible packaging that we make is enabled to run on those lines in which the, then the products get packed and then it reaches the consumer. Right? So therefore, when you go back 20 years, you had lines which used to run at probably let's say 50 packs a line. Today, lines are running at about 300 packs a minute, sorry, 50 packs a minute. Today, you have lines which are running at 300 packs a minute. So, as technology has evolved and how, as technology has enabled, the Indian flexible packaging industry has ensured that it has absorbed the latest technology available wherever and kept abreast with whatever is being the latest in the world. So therefore, today, if you look at some of the you know, he was talking about chocolates, you know, of uh, uh, you know, 80% of chocolates made from the airlines, etc. We have ch chocolate tablets which, in, which are today running at about 500 packs a minute. You can't even see the pack, you know, uh, the packs emerging from the, uh, from, the, from the lines. And you need to make flexible packaging by ensuring that it gets packed adequately. I think these are some of the things which I point, which I wanted to share with you all. Uh, Drink, drink. Okay. <laughs> so, so I made a bell of myself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, so, so you, so thank so you very much. We'll come back and. Uh, I'll come back. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you so, so much. much. Uh, very interesting uh, because uh, Amitji, you talk, talked about uh, really, uh, you know, enlightened the audience with uh, knowledge about flexible packaging. But the, the current week is Swachh Bharat week. No, we are uh, cleaning every street and uh, nook and corner, all the government offices, including the secretary. And we are doing that. No, uh, that flexible, you know, once upon a time, I think maybe about a couple of years back, Sadhguru from the Kaimutu, he told, he was, just I was listening some of his, uh, you know, some video, he was telling, plastic is one of the fantastic material ever invented by uh, man. Only when if we use it with sensible, sensibly we use it. Plastic, you no, know, everywhere now it is plastic. Everywhere. 
and uh, it should be used sensibly. Otherwise, it's a very lightweight, very strong. You can find plastic magnet also. There are technologies available. And flexible packaging is uh, one of the such technologies. Now we will invite the next speaker. Uh, he's uh, Mr. Sanjeev Goyal from Mahan Milk uh, uh, Lim Foods Limited, uh, mainly dairy man. Uh, I think uh, he will ta be talking about empowering the dairy industry through indigenous machinery. Yeah, good afternoon. I have also inherited a family business where we process milk. Uh, we process milk into various consumer products, milk powders, butter ghee, and we are doing a lot in terms of uh, high hygiene uh, formulas for uh, infants and for uh, the immunity compromised adults. Uh, we embarked on this journey, of course, I mean, we have a lot of equipment from my fellow colleagues here. Uh, yes, a lot of it is imported, I mean, much to our dismay because uh, Unfortunately, similar equipment is not manufactured here. Uh, it does make a lot of sense to get into equipment manufacturing here because the Indian market is very large. We have all the resources today in terms of quality raw materials, in, in terms of the steel, etc. And a lot of skill set. I mean, today Indians are well educated. There's a lot of skill, technical skills that can actually put together uh, the various raw materials into producing the finest of equipment. Not only equipment as a single piece of uh, equipment, even putting it together as a as a project. I mean, you know, we are a process. We are a process, continuous process industry. So. Uh, it's, it's, we, run, we run factories around the clock, uh, no respite. Uh, so obviously we cannot afford any kind of breakdown or any kind of uh, stoppage of the machines. The moment we look at an indigenized machine, it makes life a lot easier because we have easier access to the after sales service. And uh, it also reduces a lot of costs because the imported machinery is far more expensive than if the same thing were to be made here in the country. Having said that, our reliance on imports is quite strong because we are today totally looking at uh, several issues like automation, sustainability, efficiency, hygiene, etc. So, realistically, we need to, to look at addressing how we can do this and like my colleague said that we don't have to look only at India as the marketplace but look at globally because I think uh, even on a global parity we would probably be a lot more cost effective than what we are today importing and paying import duties on also. Uh, other than that, I think. Uh, uh, thank you. Actually, when we when I just gave an introduction, dairy. No, we are really good in uh, installing very big dairy plants. That is one uh, uh, strong point of this country. But we also import the dairy processing machinery. We export as well as import. And uh, maybe because of many reasons, some people are, uh, anything Videsi is good. And that kind of a mentality is also one reason. Now, sometimes you import machinery because they are uh, really technologically advanced, uh, well automated, and then uh, uh, some, sometimes productivity cost comes down. Maybe the capital cost is more. You know, productivity is better, and you make a really very safe food for export. That is the reason we put the imported machinery. We have we have rice milling machinery here. Bureau man is here. Then we have Dandeka we, uh, machinery, you know, Dandeka and I think Binni rice mills when I was a student. And those companies have gone into thin air like Kodak camera, you no know, Kodak uh, photo films. I don't know because of maybe they have not put more R&D effort. 
and uh, Bueller Germans are good at it, and uh, they brought uh, uh, better machines. Probably they went out of business. Of course, we need. He was telling six, six, you know, six ton per hour is the minimum size now. When I was a student, half ton per hour machine, Sata ki machine was available. I was trained in that machine, in that plant, half ton per hour rice milling machine. But now Sata ki makes ten tons per hour and above, hundred tons per hour rice milling. I think Bueller also is similar, similar case. Very beautiful rice milling only. Bueller machines are available. Of course, Miltek and other companies are there. We have, I think, one more speaker left out. But let me uh, bring in, bring in here. Nitin, yeah. Optic, I know, because they have not given any paper. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the last speaker. Of course, we will come second round. Uh, he is uh, Mr. Nitin Gupta, founder of Sickle Innovations, a uh, well-known uh, company here in India. Uh, he will be talking about localizing production. <coughs> Uh, developing and uh, scaling food processing machinery in India. This is exactly uh, 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 topic which is very dear to my heart. I am by myself being an engineer. I want every machinery possible to be made in this country. I think you will throw some light on it. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to the organizing uh, committee for inviting us here. And among all the heavyweights here uh, sitting on the dais, and uh, we are the youngest and we are the smallest number, but uh, I don't know how much value I can add to the uh, uh, knowledgeable dais here, but I would, you know, share some stories, you know, how we started and what we are doing exactly. So, uh, we started developing solutions for farms. So, when I talk about farms, when we talk about India, like uh, uh, our colleague, Mr. Uh, uh, from Buller, uh, he also mentioned that, you know, uh, when we are starting anything for India, we need to make it very small, right? So uh, that reason is because, uh, you know, 55% of our population is working to feed rest of the 45%. And I, we don't see this as a challenge. We see this as an opportunity. The moment you see this as an opportunity, your whole framework changes. Your mindset changes. So you see a big opportunity. Uh, you see the entry barrier for all this, uh, you know, international brands to come in and then, uh, you know, uh, take and eat that market. I, I believe India is not a country. It is a world in itself. It has very developed part where, uh, like, uh, uh, Delhi, uh, big uh, Amul uh, is there. So they can afford the imported. Uh, machinery as well. Their ROI works there. And there is a uh, bigger market, 80%, more than 80% of our Indian farms are less than one hectare. You imagine here, yeah, we are the, collectively, we are the second largest producer of any crop you take, first or second, cotton, uh, you take cereal crops, you take horticulture crops. So that means we have the capacity, we have very big market, but that market is fragmented, it is having a very small pieces. So the challenge here is not to, you know, uh, uh, bring the top-down approach where we have a technology and we try to customize it. It is about developing new technologies for those small farms. And if we are able to do that, we uh, clearly see that, uh, you know, success. We have uh, more than two lakhs products we have sold in the last 10 years. We, we are a 10-year-old company and uh, we have been profitable. We didn't raise any fund from outside. We did, we did all this by ourselves, and we we always worked on the unit economics. If the unit economics works for the farmers, so the product uh, you know lifts up. Uh, people buy the products. We do grading, sorting machinery uh, for small farmers. Let's say you know uh, one ton per hour. We were talking about half ton per hour vegetables. We can do grading, sorting, and we make sure that the unit economics are such that you know within first year, so the the investment starts giving the profits. And then we don't have to do any work in the sales farm. Everything is, you know, taken care of if the unit economics is working. So I, I believe, uh, you know, we have a very good opportunity in our country. People, uh, as uh, it was also mentioned, ki, uh, now there is a lot of skilled labor available. We have uh, availability of, uh, you know, uh, quality raw material, which was not the earlier the case because of a lot of sanctions. 
So all those things, you know, now it's available and we, we can do all those machinery in-house. We can indigenize those technologies and we don't really have to, you know, uh, copy those products, you know, exactly as what they are. We should take a bottom-up approach where we understand our own needs and we solve for that. Uh, sometimes, like, you know, our uh, clients, uh, they would come, come to us and they'll ask, uh, uh, you don't need to make a 100% uh, uh, you know, efficient product. You give us 80% accurate uh, uh, product and you give us one person who is there always all the time and who can, you know, fix the machine on the spot which is at the ha half the cost of the, you know, the original machine. So imagine if this kind of uh, thought process is there. And uh, second part which I wanted to highlight uh, is I think, you know, we have uh, somehow diluted our own brand, uh, brand as India brand. Uh, we, whenever it comes to any, uh, you know, imported machinery, we always uh, look at it that, you know, it is going to work 100%. But that's not the case. Uh, I can, you know, watch, I, uh, being a scientist in Israel, I've seen those things, what happens. It is just the marketing gimmick. Uh, you know, those machineries which are coming, it's not always 100%. Yes, they are a little better, but uh, just with the face value, they are priced much higher. We can do the same thing in our country, much lower cost. So that's what I believe. Uh, maybe I'll come back uh, in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. And this is what really Atma Nirbar, Nirbar, and I am also Tamil, you know, I, I don't speak very good in Hindi. Mera Hindi is not a nahi hai. But speak Hindi, somehow I manage. No, Atma Nirbar Bharati is about uh, making self-reliant India. So we, no, we have, we need machinery for fruit and vegetable processing, rice milling, flour milling, spice processing, chocolate, you know, confectionery part. There are many types of machinery. Uh, which are required uh, for food processing. And uh, no, in this, no, the, the, the gone are the days where I also made some 16 uh, gadgets. You know, I'm a scientist. And I sold, I manufactured in our, because I'm a government man, you know, the university man. People sell it to a few pieces here and there. My buyer, I improved. I got promotion as director now. Uh, okay. <laughs> but that is not the case. If you sell uh, lakhs and uh, thousands and thousands of pieces of machinery, then that is really, uh, you have done a good job. You know, uh, in terms of Tanjavur Pavilion, in Mafia Pavilion, we have four machines. We work on a different field. We work on uh, really frontier areas of research. One of the seven labs working on a uh, 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 non-thermal processing. There are certain technologies. And then uh, we have machine, uh, machine lines made for Moringa processing. Say, we, you can see in our uh, stall in the hall number 14, uh, what we really require, you know, this uh, particular uh, eminent uh, speakers, what we really require is, this is a day of artificial intelligence and automation. Even a small machinery can be really, uh, no, uh, improved to use these technologies. It's not that very uh, difficult. No, it requires a little bit effort. Maybe it will come, it will come. Artificial intelligence has changed the way process, the processing is done in the industry. A lot of change, a lot of change, all automated, everything. You, you can handle an egg so you know, fragile. And we have an egg plant, it handles millions of eggs in a day. It you know, cleans, washes, checks whether there is a blood clot inside the egg, and then identify and prints. This is a made, you know, a manufacture. No, it's not manufacture. It is a data manufacturer, you have to put, no? This print on the air, it comes out. Only the problem is, 6 rupees eggs become 12, 12 rupees or 15 rupees. What do you eat? The same egg. But once it goes to Bueller company and comes back, it becomes <laughs> <laughs> And that's what you know? They don't make a egg for egg. Mystery for egg. <laughs> okay. This is what happened. Thank you for this the small... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Doctor, was a small consultation. Anyway, we are not in egg business. <laughs> Market, there are eggs which are really you have to uh, you know, give it through your nose. You have to pay it through your nose. That uh, six eggs cost 90 rupees. You know, that's so expensive. You should come down. You have to make machinery which are you know, for different markets. For rural processing, primary processing, we need a very efficient machinery. We need efficient machinery. 
very productive machinery, but it is affordable cost. It can, it, uh, technology wise, no, don't expect our uh, no people to have a really uh, a double degrees and triple degrees. No, you know, many of the food processing technology is not a rocket technology. No, we have made thousands and thousands of rocket products in this country without those technologies. Right? Only thing it has to be automated. How best we can really help, our industry can help to produce such a machine. That is very prime important. Then uh, next, uh, no, we, I made a few points. I should not be a speaker. That's why I'll give opportunity to, again, one more round, two to three minutes. Maybe we have, a, I think, a time. We are within, still we have 15 minutes time. Huh? Only to close, he has come. <laughs> <laughs> to start, he was not there. <laughs> Okay, another two, three minutes. Those who spoke two minutes, three minutes, you can take about three minutes. Those who spoke two minutes, uh, seven minutes, you can take one minute. <laughs> Just, uh, Mr. Sanjay, I think that the best will put you, us together here so I can solve your problem. Most of you know Tetra Pak about this packaging material. Yeah? But we are not, a, we are not a only a, a packaging material solution. You know, we are more than that. We are an end-to-end solution provider for the food industry. More than a package, Tetrapak can provide also food processing equipment and for different categories. We, produce, we manufacture here in India, in our plant there in Chakan, cheese equipment. 40% of the ice cream produced in India is made on Tetrapak equipment. Produce it here locally, manufactured there in Chakan. We also manufacture sterilizers, pasteurizers, bruise nectar, steel drinks, all kinds of equipment we are able to manufacture. And we are already using AI in some of our equipment to improve efficiency. Because when we go and talk to our customers regarding price of equipment, you know, wow, that pack is too expensive. No, but you need to change the concept. It's not about the pricing of the equipment. It's about total cost of ownership how much value this equipment can bring to your produ production. And that is the value that we bring to customers when we talk about processing food. Yeah. We bring to customers TCO. You know, we can showcase to them that more than the quality of the product, we can also bring sustainability. We also manufacture equipments here. We have a one technology, name it one step technology, that is for uh, dairy processing, that we remove it one part of the standard way of producing milk. And on doing that, we have saved 30% in terms of energy. We have a new uh, blender for the juice and nectar category, that is an in inline blending. With this inline blending, we are able to save 36 million calories of energy in a juice and nectar plant. Another example, in a big dairy customer, we replaced the standard pumps of this plant for our heating pumps. And now we are saving 100 megawatts of energy every year. So that is the value that we try to bring to customers. But not only that, you know, we are also talking to customers about innovation. We have in this plant in Chakan as well, a product development center and innovation. Because we are a multinational we, we, and we are in a 106 different countries, we have the experience and we know what is, I mean, what is the, the, the trends in terms of new categories that is popping up in different parts of the world that we'll be able to manage here in India as well. And we bring this innovation to customers. You know? In that side, we can have a whole session of uh, what we call ideation that we co-create. We uh, have ideation session with the customers. We do uh, marketing activities that we can brand a product and we have a pilot plant that we are able in the end of the session to formulate a product and customer can have a taste of that product into the market. So this is kind of the solutions that uh, we can bring into the market. A lot of automation, no matter, we know that automation will bring more efficiency within the, the machines, but all, not only on the processing part. We have the highest 
speed machine, all the packaging materials are. 40,000 packs per hour. These machines and the main market has been in India now. And uh, just uh, uh, last but not least, when we talk about recyclability and recycling, you know, despite we have only 5% on the flexible packages, carton packages in India is 45% recycling rate. It's renewable source, 75% is paper board, and we are driving these more and more within our headquarters to make this package the most sustainable package in the world. We have already in Spain one customer running a paper-based barrier that has 90% of paper content, renewable source. That is the value that Tetra Pak can bring into the food industry. Already exporting 400 food processing equipment to 68 different countries, manufactured here in India. Thank you very much. Nowadays, in the official circles, now we talk about sustainability. This is what the sustainability is all about. Food processing, now it is an energy guzzler, like cement processing, you know. And you, uh, you, you take a lot of energy which is not known to public. Uh, food processing industries consume a lot of energy. When they, you save through innovation in the machinery, to 30% of the energy, you know, that's what we, he was quoting. Really a, a good uh, step towards sustainability. And a re, re, uh, you know, circular economy, another buzzword. Every, there are many sessions around this, you know, in 24 sessions, at least one or two sessions talk about the circular econ economy. And uh, this is one area when you recycle it, reuse it or recycle it, really it uh, helps that cost and reduces the further production as well. Now, with that, we will go to the next speaker. Uh, our Bueller man, he's not making egg. <laughs> okay. Thanks, thanks. Uh, I think just to touch upon uh, what we spoke is, yes, innovation will continue to happen and the market will de decide what innovation needs to be done. So we have done on multiple, I touched upon drives, we've done multiple things across in floor, um, we had a coffee roasters development, so I think that's a journey uh, we've done. But I just want to touch upon one innovation which we did for India, which is very, very important for us. Of the 110 million tons of wheat which is produced in India, almost 60% goes for atta. And atta has been made through a traditional chakki process. Uh, you know, chakki is very intensive, labor intensive. Um, you need to have a grinding of the stones done, uh, not all that hygienic. Uh, and that was uh, a solution which we wanted to bring about and then we developed the solution in India uh, what we call the stoneless grinding. Uh, this was done in India in collaboration with our Swiss colleague because they had the knowledge but it was developed for the Indian markets and we did something which is called a pesa mill. Okay, which is completely stoneless grinding with various capacities uh, and that we believe is something like innovation for the market, nothing to do with what happens globally but do what the market wants. And we've done the similar in terms of maybe biscuits is another example of what we did, where uh, we had acquired a company called Haas in Denmark in 2018. Again, step one, make the same ovens in Denmark, built in India, but step two, design an oven for the Indian markets, which means low cost. But again, I want to emphasize low cost does not be low quality, because many times we associate quality and cost. Low cost means low quality, that's not the case. Because customer, for him, it is, whether he pays 100 rupees or 1000 rupees for him, the quality expectations are the same. But many times we associate quality and cost differently, which is not the case there. More important, I want to touch upon is also in terms of sustainability. Um, some of the colleagues spoke about it. What do we do has to be sustainable. How do we utilize the value stream, the spent value streams into the business? And all the innovations, what we do has to address energy, waste and water. Unless the, an innovation addresses any of these three issues, uh, we do not want to go ahead with the innovation. If you look at the greenhouse gas emissions, 25% of greenhouse gas emissions globally comes from food and feed. And we have to work with our customers to reduce this impact and whatever innovation we have to do has to have a positive impact on the customer's life. The last point I want to touch upon when you say uh, 
Make in India initiatives, Atmanirbha, uh, the pace of adoption or uh, the pace of innovation has definitely gone up. Uh, we speak about China plus one strategy uh, and, and India has been one of the beneficiaries where most of the investments have happened and we in our organization definitely see this impact. The number of innovations we launched in India, if you look at the last four or five years, is I would say uh, what we done in the last 10 years or 15 years. We done those innovations, the speed of innovation has gone up, the number of products we launched has gone up, which definitely says India is a market where we have to be, India is thriving and this also becomes an export hub. Uh, it's not about dealer here, I think all the manufacturing companies in India uh, have to be in for the long run. It's not about multinationals having more money, you know, it is, you have to invest in the long run here. Uh, quality has to be the same. It doesn't matter whether you're making a product for the Indian market or making a product for the global market. It's just one product which can be exported and made in India, but we don't have to dilute on the quality standards. I think today morning uh, in, in one of the sessions, I think uh, Mr. Uh, there was alluding to something which came from the Prime Minister and say very clearly quality is, is, is a prime of is of prime importance. So we need to ensure that quality is there. We have only one standard, there is no global standard, there is no local standard, only one standard we talk about and we adhere to this and develop the ecosystem around this. Then I think um, customers are there to support us. That, that's from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ajay. Now we uh, call upon now uh, next speaker. We, take, we can take two, three minutes. Right? I think I do. No, you are taking a cue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are taking the eight minutes there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a month. I think one very important uh, issue of relevance is that uh, I think as we progress, there is a general mindset change, there is a shift. Earlier people thought, okay, let's call me from the village, okay, this is what I and whatever we buy as processed, packaged, is not the same in terms of the nutritional profile or the taste, uh, and it's, it's just not the same product. So I think uh, a lot is happening, I mean, this thanks to media, thanks to people getting educated, where there is a there is a shift more on processed food as opposed to depending on what is coming directly from the village as fresh produce. Also, I think uh, with the with the shift in terms of uh, because I think a lot of us, a lot has been said on the size bit where. Uh, the user industry was too small, started too small, and, and it's generally shifting up in size and scale. Uh, I think Indian food processing now has come, come to scale, and, and we are pretty much looking at, at installations which are uh, global scale or both in terms of uh, the quantity processed and the throughputs and the and the quality throughput through those facilities. So the only thing is now, I mean, I mean, I want to go a step further and say when I said that there's enough raw material and enough technology that exists in the country. Although I'm not, I'm not from the manufacturing uh, piece, the coupon manufacturing piece, but just for uh, sake of everybody else here. We pretty much have now 3D printing uh, pretty much available, so you know you can pretty much have anything 3D printed. Uh, we have very good uh, surface coating technologies in the country now. Where uh, just for this, just for uh, the knowledge of everybody else here, uh, all uh, you have all heard about the PLI given to the Apple phone industry and all the equipment coming in from China. But most of the tooling that was made for that uh, equipment was all made in India. It was very, very high precision tooling, which uh, got uh, excellent surface coatings in India. And that tooling happens to last much longer or give, give far better results than the tooling that came in as originally from, from China itself. So, I mean, there is, there is abundance 
of use case and there is uh, also the fact that today a uh, lot of the skill set really exists. So I would only request my erstwhile colleagues here to realistically look at how they could shift some of their manufacturing bases from the European nations to, to our country and uh, help us grow and grow with the nation itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what really I uh, expected from this session when we uh, selected this uh, uh, topic. Now, uh, this is uh, already a lot of muscle flexing by our new flex man. And <laughs> we ask Amit, uh, please, you take one minute because uh, already people are standing there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So what I do is that actually touch, uh, touch upon the uh, the most critical element of uh, uh, you know plastic waste, and that is called uh, it's called you know uh, collection, uh, recycling, etc. So hitherto the, uh, the 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 energies have been focused on source reduction, right? So give an example. For example, if one kilo of flexible packaging used to pack, let's say, uh, one liter of shampoo, right? Over a period of time, you know, let's say 500 grams of flexible packaging could pack one liter of shampoo. So this was the traditional process of, 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 of you know, source reduction, etc. Uh, things have gone much beyond that today. There's a clear government guideline. Uh, there's a very good uh, uh, you know, notification or law, which is called Plastic Waste Management Rules, Extended Producers Responsibility, right? So in that, everyone has a role to play. The producer, the brand owner, right? And the consumer will, of course, pay for the product, right? So you are supposed to get plastic waste collected and you are supposed to get it recycled. There is a very nice portal which has been created by the government which enables traceability so that you know there is no leakage or people are not fulfilling the obligation. Right? But I think more importantly today the, the element which has emerged is circularity and that is what we have talked about. We have talked about reduction in consumption of pure plastics. Right? To that, so the law says that effective 1st of April 25, 10% recycled content has to be incorporated in the packaging that you use. Right? Going forward over a two-year period, 20%. The best thing about this is that the industry, that is the flexible packaging industry, is ready to enable brand owners meet these targets. That's the best thing about it. So therefore, my belief is that there would be no pushing back on these targets. It will get implemented effective 1st of April and the industry is ready to help the brand owners and the consumers lab meet these targets. Thank you. Uh, uh, the second round, last speaker, uh, Mr. Nitin. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know, uh, and I'll be very short on this. Uh, what I'll uh, speak about is one case study, and I will talk about how machinery, uh, what is the impact of machinery, both positive and negative. I'll give you one scenario. So we work uh, uh, a big time in apple crop, which is in Himachal and Kashmir. And uh, what happened is, uh, what happens in uh, generally, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, regular, uh, you see the farmers produce all these apples. So let's say a farmer is producing one ton of apples. All those apples are having different grades by color, size, shape, everything is different, right? So, uh, and uh, uh, those are purchased by, uh, you know, large uh, you know, groups, uh, you know, one of the biggest groups in uh, apples. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how to name it. Uh, so they have a lot of uh, stores where they store the apple, they buy it from the farmers and then they store it. It, have to, it started some uh, 15, 20 years back when they started purchasing apples from Himachal. And uh, uh, what will they do is they will only procure apples which are from the higher uh, than 7,000 feet height because those apples are uh, the good quality which can be stored. So uh, they brought all this machinery from uh, you know, Europe, uh, uh, huge machinery, 10 ton, 15 ton per hour capacity. So the farmer will bring the produce, they will do the grading sorting, they will pay farmers based on the grades. So if it is uh, a, a very good red color and of particular size, so according to the weight of that, they will pay some amount. So like this, you know, they have some 24, 25 different grades and different prices of each grade. So a, a complex metric was formed and uh, they were paid. So farmer was uh, uh, happy because you know they don't have to do all this packing and all. They have just dump the material and they get paid. 
but what happened in this case is ki, uh, so those groups started determining the price of the crop and uh, so whenever they have to store apples so the whole market will crash down because they will open the price they will dictate the price so last two years we did something really amazing on the ground we started making smaller machinery for ten para and we started giving to the farmers the quality market is already existing people want to buy and of course people want to buy directly from the farmers because you know they don't have to be the intermediary so this year uh, last year we did just two machines uh, this year we did 30 machines in that area where all this uh, stores are there and this is the first time in last 20 years when they are not getting material in their stores because farmers don't want to sell it to them because they are losing uh, you know that money there and they imagine with our 20 lakh rupees machine they are able to you know recover that cost in a single season and now they are dictating the price and this is the first time the the price has been this is the first time the price they opened the season was uh, with about 80 rupees then they increase the price by 85 and then they again there is a revision of 90 rupees and still they are not getting the material from the i mean as much as was they wanted to do so this is one impact which can be created if the right machinery is there in the right you know value chain you imagine that you know the advantage of grading sorting which was being passed on to the industry which is not bad but in this case at least you know that is going to the farmers pocket because their all other expenses have also increased so yeah i, I just wanted to share this uh, you know case with you thank you thank you sir thank you very much we need very really machinery such machinery for our uh, Rural market where uh, grading, sorting is can be done. Machine mission is not a very big technology nowadays. Earlier, maybe 20 years back, it is a really very big technology. Machine mission in everybody, every inch, academic institution is having a an a capacity to do such uh, machinery. And robotics, robotics also now in every uh, walk of life. Uh, maybe in food pro in in food processing also robotic also has come in a big way and uh, I I actually have to uh, remind this group as well as the audience. No, India is a 1.5 1.4 billion population with nearly 60 to 65 percent young people. We need to create jobs as well. I I don't say by using the machinery we lose lo jobs. It's not the case. In many of the agricultural uh, engineering machinery, when it came, people thought that we will lose job, but that is not the case. We don't have really enough labor in many many areas, many places. Even for agriculture, we don't have enough quality labor. We need machinery to improve efficiency, no a timely operation. Same case, this food processing industry is a mind-boggling figure. You know, nearly. Well, you know, I think uh, if my data, uh, I have the data, I may quote it a little bit wrong, uh, because in urgency, we actually have about 20 lakh jobs are uh, given from uh, are from the food processing industry in regular manufacturing sector. 20 lakh jobs in this country. In unorganized sector in the food processing industry, we are uh, we are employing 50 lakh people. This is the modest estimate from my ministry. Okay, that means we have a lot of things to do in this area to have an efficient, uh, uh, you know, uh, the you know, labor force using some in innovative machinery. That is what required, which is cost effective and reasonably effective and efficient. This is with this, you know, we are running already. We, uh, you know, over a short time by about uh, 10 minutes. I thank you very much for a wonderful panel we had. And uh, hopefully my uh, rapporteurs have jotted down important points because ultimately they will be on my head <laughs> to give <laughs> to give a no recommendation. Thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, and uh, really we want to have a uh, you know give a memorable thank you uh, to each one of the panel members. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Bye, sir. No, you please. I'm missing that. I'm stuck here. Get back.